and welcome back to the channel, Staboom. I don't know why it's Staboom stuff. I do not know, but we're back. And we're back with a good video because if you can see outside, sun is shining, weather is sweet, make you want to move your dancing feet. What it also makes you want to do is work on that midsection. And I've got something very, very simple, but very good that you guys can be doing from home with minimal, 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 minimal equipment. And what's... We can do this. We can do this. It's early in the morning, but we can do this. Minimal equipment to help you tighten and shrink that waistline. So I'm talking about flatter stomach, tighter waist, but added bonus, we're also going to be able to improve that posture and fixing what's often known as the duck butt or pelvic tilt. Booyah! The moment that Batman and Batman wakes you up. That is gonna be Vacuums. This is the number one exercise of today, but also if you choose to only do one exercise of all the ones I will show you today, this is the one that requires no equipment and, in my opinion, is one of the most important ones that you could be doing to improve on your midsection. Now, a lot of people think that this is an exercise where you breathe in. Wrong. You actually have to breathe all the air out and you're actually doing this anaerobically. So it is tough, but it is one that utilizes your internal core muscles, not just your external core muscles. The idea of it is, is to breathe all the way out, and then suck it in and up. What we're not doing is, now, this is a tough exercise. You usually need to start on your hands and knees and then progress to being able to be stood up over a number of weeks. The reason this is the best exercise to be doing is because it works not only the outer muscles, but our internal core muscles. And what that means is, if we've got a belly that's sticking out here with lazy internal muscles, and then we work the internals, whoom, we create that flatter, leaner, tighter midsection. It's also going to give you a better mind to muscle connection. But as I said, you're probably going to need to start on your hands and knees. So let's take a look at that. So the hands and knees method, the reason this is easier because it allows you to focus solely on your midsection. But for that, you need to join me on the floor. This is the face of recognition now. And it's recording. Lovely. <laughs> we're on our knees at the moment. What we're going to look to do here is we're going to come over into a classic, I don't know if you've got like a cat position or whatever, but we're going to have our knees in line with the hips. We're going to come down and simply Hands down, in line with your shoulders. And at this point, what I'm gonna avoid here is this arch in my back and my body wants to do. I wanna get rid of that for starters. So I'm gonna push my low back towards the ceiling and then I'm gonna bring my butt and hips round. So we're flattening off that back. This is my starting position. From here, I'm gonna exhale, which you watch, if you watch my midsection, it's gonna contract those abs already. So here's relax and as I exhale, making our core and the abs contract naturally, and that's gonna help tighten that core. And from there, we're then gonna pull in and up. So, bang, and it's gonna hurt from that lower all the way up. Here, here, what was that noise? Here. So this is gonna hurt. You might feel this in your lower back. You're definitely gonna feel it in the abs. You might even feel it around your hip flexors on all around the sides and the core of this waistline. Absolutely normal. If you're making the here noise, you know you're on the right track. From here, what you would do progression wise is you would look to go from hands and knees to bent over on like a windowsill or a low table. So you're stood up, but you're bent over on your forearms. Then you go from forearms to straight arms to eventually being upright. But we're talking about weeks and weeks of work. So stay, start on your hands and knees, nail that. Once you can do 10 sets of 10 seconds, then move on to the next position. Until you can do that, solid 10 of 10, stay where you are, grind it out, see the results. But here's a top tip for how to integrate this easily into your day. And my top tips for making this an easy part of your day and an easy part of your daily routine is once you get up downstairs, coffee, machine on, priming, Alexa, play. Late night legacy, door, open, fresh air in, we're already waking up. Back, coffee machine on, start breathing in that delicious roast. And as simple as waiting for that, hands go down, we breathe out, vacuums. Fear, fear so cold, I can Second movement I want to take you through. This can be incorporated into any part of your day, any part of your training. This is a major one that I've used to help improve my pelvic tilt. Pelvic tilt, as many of you know, is the duck butt. So that's when your hips tilt this way. So you end up with an arch in the lower back. The lower back gets lazy, sticks his tummy out, and you end up with this duck butted effect. By helping with the leg raises, I've been able to pull those hips round and stand in a much more neutral and beneficial postural position. That's a lot of words. 
The way we go about this is very simple. We're going to cover three different types of raises that you can do and we get progressively harder so you can either stick to one of these and build your way up or mix all three together. The setup. This is critical because if you start wrong, you're going to finish wrong. Start right and you'll stay right. If you happen to have this kind of pelvic tilt going on or some postural alignment issues, what you want to do when hanging is focus on pushing your lower back towards the wall behind you and pulling your abs tight. And I don't mean too tight, just aware that you're pushing that lower back and pulling those abs in tight. This is our starting position. And we always want to extend back to here every single rep. The starting exercise we're going to be is knee raise. Really simple, we're just going to pull our knees up, making sure we pull those lower abs in, driving that lower back towards the wall behind. And you can see already my body's shaking, but I'm kind of relaxed. That lets me know that my body's working and it's hitting the areas it should be. And we simply try and hang like this for 30 seconds, five sets. Deep bit. So moving on from just having that static hold, we can actually make that into a full movement. Get that set up right. Start right, you'll finish right. So same thing, so we're going to come shoulder width apart, we're going to hang, we're going to engage the abs, flatten that lower back towards the wall behind us. From here, we're going to raise up, as we did before, but now we're going to come back down. And this is the important part, especially if you have the postural alignment issues. As you come down, what's going to happen is your lower back is going to want to arch and disengage those abs. And that's because we've developed bad mechanics. So you're gonna to have to really force that back to stay straight and drive through with your heels and extend that midsection. So this is where we end up, not here. See that difference? And that's all we do. Focus on that nice, slow, strict movement. 10 to 15 reps, five sets. Whew, it burns, mama, it burns. Oh. So we've done the raise, we've done the raises. Now a little variation that I like, I like to do a knee tuck. So it's the same as the raise, but what we're looking to do is we're gonna roll our hips around and underneath, bringing in more of those lower abs. Remember, our hips are tilting this way. So if we're rolling them underneath, we're helping to alleviate all those tight spots that we've generated in the hip flexors and the lower back from being in this bad postural alignment. If you don't have postural issues, it's still got benefits. So again, we set up, we get it all right, whew, all in a line. We're going to come up, and as we come here, we're now going to really roll through. So get that nice tuck and underneath. Again, fighting that negative, not letting that lower back arch. And then again, it's through, extend. And you might feel this in your hip flexors, especially if you're new to doing it. But just keep going, focus on those abs doing the work. Relax your hands, Ooh, and grind them out. Five sets, 10 to 15 reps. Woo! Still want to see the last one? Yeah, all right, fair enough. So the final movement is gonna be the full leg raise. It's the same exact rules all the way through, but instead of just bringing our knees up, we're gonna extend our legs out straight and keep them straight. Now, again, there's gonna be even more of a leverage point on your abs and hips at this point because we're putting more weight further away from the body. So what that's gonna do is increase stress on that lower back and it's really gonna to want to arch on the negative. So you really have to fight this one. If you need to take breaks in between the sets, take as long as you need and just get these done. This is all about the technique and the slower and stricter you do it, the better. I don't care if you get five reps. Five good reps are better than 20 bad reps or half-assed reps. You set, get everything right, start right, finish right. We're gonna come up and then back down. And it's that negative you're really gonna to have to focus on. What we want to avoid is this swinging. This doesn't take any energy. Here I can talk real easy. Now if I stop, the body's not swinging. The goal is to not let the body swing. I come up and then back down. Hit the stress in my voice and that's what we want. Ooh, that tension. So you've got all the tension, no body swing, and a really, really great way of fighting the body from that bad habit of having that pelvic Tilt, get rid of your duck butt, and build the abs. Whew. The next exercise is a well-known one to look at, but often done quite poorly, and that's the Russian twist. But this needs no cutting whatsoever. All we're gonna do is sit with our feet planted. Now, the basis of this movement is it's rotational. So it's actually really good for helping build some of that core mobility. And if, like me, you've got a very tight back, you're gonna have a very narrow range of movement on this, but that's absolutely fine. What you'll often see though, is people reaching around and moving like this. But this is a lot of upper body, shoulder, 
rotation and actually is taking focus away from the core. What we want to do is put our hands together and lock them so that we put a bit of pressure between our palm and our fist and what that's going to do is help us engage our shoulders and lock them in position. From here we're going to drive with the outer elbow on each side to whichever way we move and we're going to pull them around as far as it goes but by keeping our shoulders locked what we're stopping is any of this excessive movement. So we grip, we lock our shoulders, we're still relaxed, pull our core tight, we're going to make sure our back isn't arched so we're pulling our low back to the wall behind again so already there should be tension here and then we're going to roll through, pulling through with the outer elbow and this is as far as I can go. If I release the shoulders I can push this further but I'm getting no extra ab activation. So this is where I stop then I roll back to the center and then drive through and pull through with the right elbow and this is all we do. But with this exercise we're going to go for 30 seconds non-stop so I get a timer, stay strict and feel the burn. Whew. Oh this is a good one when it's done right. And this one is really going to help bring in all those obliques, those intercostals, all those nice fine little side details as well as help you pull those lower abs and keep them nice and tight. The progressive point on these is to add a little bit of weight. So once you feel like you're proficient enough in your technique, you're able to keep that lean back with a tight stomach and that arch in your lower back isn't occurring. You can add a little bit of weight. Again, we're gonna press against the sides, feet nice and firm and flat in front of you. And we're just gonna roll. And again, no excessive motion. Just as far as you can go naturally without letting those shoulders go. So keep that pressure on whatever weight it is you're using in the middle. And this, again, is gonna really help develop all of that core detail. But with the extra weight, you should improve on your range of motion as it forces you to go through a little bit of extra range of motion. Ooh. Ooh. The final exercise we're going to show you today, we thought we'd show you outside because this is where we want to be during that summer fun. And this is a fantastic exercise, especially if you've found sit-ups or crunches tend to hit your hip flexors or you tend to have a lot of lower back arch. And this is the butterfly crunch. Now what we're going to do, we're going to set up with our feet together, heels pressed together, as if you're doing a groin stretch. From here, what we're going to look to do is keep constant pressure between the feet. We're going to be pressing them together hard as we lie back. Crotch cam! And what that does is it brings in our adductors and by then squeezing out our glutes and driving our hips forward a little bit, you can see how it does this kind of motion. So I go from here, drive the glutes and squeeze my feet. Now all of my hip flexors, adductors and glutes are engaged and what that means is they're now taken out of the movement completely. So from here what I'm going to look to do is just crunch up and it is purely now by keeping pressure on my feet, I'm not letting them go, it's stopping any involvement from the hip flexors and it's allowing me to drive my lower back permanently into that floor without it wanting to arch because what it's doing is stopping that pelvic tilt from even being able to occur by engaging the muscles that fight against it. So from here, we're just gonna look. You can either do reps, we're looking for that 10 to 15 or 30 seconds constant until that timer beeps. You're gonna do five rounds, whether that's reps or time. But give this one a go, especially if you find you get a lot of hip flexors coming in when you're trying to do any kind of normal sit up. Really engage the abs all the way through the top four and semi into the lower abs, but it's mainly that upper section. And this whoa, is a killer way to start the day. So there you have it, some very simple exercises that I use on a daily and weekly basis that have really helped improve my midsection in a huge way, especially with that added benefit of fighting that pelvic tilt. That's gonna help you stand taller, connect better with your midsection, and plus, like I said, this is gonna translate into all of your other training. The stronger your core, the more connected to your core that you are, the better everything else is gonna be because you are simply gonna have better mechanics. But you do need to understand that if you want to really see those abs, you are going to have to diet down to shed that fat that's covering them. But regardless, 
Doing these exercises is always gonna help pull that stomach in and hold your whole midsection tighter. Plus, like I said, improve that training. So if you have enjoyed this video, you're gonna give it a go, or you want some questions answered about what you've seen, hit me up in the comment section down below. You can also follow me on Instagram at Lex underscore fitness, where I show you many more routines like this posted up every week. Plus just some fun nonsense that I get up to with daily shenanigans. So thanks for joining in. If you've made it this far, leave a comment, let's fight that algorithm. Leave a daft comment below, leave me your favorite insult. No, let's not get negative. In the comment section, just leave me a titty titty bum bum or some other funny comment that you'd like to leave. Let's just make it a weird place for people to get involved. I'll catch you in the next video.